Hi, I'm Brian Lord, Senior Vice President of Premier Speakers Bureau. Happy to have on Olympic champion and motivational speaker Peter Vidmar. Peter, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks. It's great to be on, Brian. Thanks. Great. Now, uh, like the business world, the Olympics are very, very competitive. And you often point out, and I love this, I read your book about six years ago, and I still remember one of the most impactful points is the difference between first place and last place in the Olympics is such a small percentage. Um, how, does that, how does that come about in reflection between the business and the Olympics? Well, you know, actually, I think that the, the business world can sometimes be more competitive than the Olympics because at least for me, if I get second place, I go home with a silver medal. But if your client or customer chooses the other guy's product or service over yours, you go home with nothing. There is no silver medal in sales. So sometimes the stakes are a lot higher. So you can't tell me the little extra efforts or focused attention to detail doesn't make a difference because that might be the only difference that caused that client to choose someone else. And so in my presentations, for example, I kind of vividly describe the close calls you'll see at the Olympic Games and how people often only win by a fraction of a second or a fraction of an inch or a fraction of a point. And what that really means is that they probably, in the years before the Games, maybe only worked about that much harder or that much smarter. So I talk a lot about what those little extra efforts really mean and how to stay focused on giving that extra effort every day. So how can an attendee, if they're listening to you, how do you teach them how to get that extra 1% or 2%? Well, first of all, we have to understand that people tend to work hard. We all work hard when we feel like working hard, when we're having a good day, when things are going well, when we get results. But it seems like the best, and I was lucky because I got to train daily with the best, they always seem to figure out a way to really focus when they didn't feel like it, when it's just plain inconvenient to put forth any more effort. And I always used to think, you know, if I could become more like those guys, that's when I'll really improve. That's when I'll get a lot better. And so I try to use, once again, examples of, of what I did with my teammates in the gym to really focus on that little extra effort and, and how we stayed motivated by keeping that vision of what the real goal really was. And so I won't give that away, but it's a, it's a fun example I did with my teammate. Now, what are some of the, you speak to a wide range of audiences, what are the best audiences to hear your message? I think anybody that wants to really uh, improve, to improve their performance. Uh, and so as a result, of course, I do speak to a lot of sales-oriented audiences. Mm -hmm. I also speak at a lot of recognition events. Uh, so maybe a, a, a group of salespeople or other folks that, that reach a certain level of production or performance that they get recognized at a special event, I, I do a lot of those as well, and I guess, you know, as an Olympic champion, I can go and we can kind of share our, our stories of uh, what we're able to do and kind of maybe reinforce good behavior in the future as well. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that I think stands out that you're great for. A lot of times I have event planners that come up and they have this problem. They're like, I have this, whether it's a sales team or an executive team, where they're like, they know everything. And, and you know, the event's a reward event, and you don't want to wear them down, but but these are the best of the best. How do you get the best of the best? Because when you're talking about Olympians, I mean, they're the best of the best in the world at what they do. How do they do better? I mean, you're an actual champion, not, not to say just an Olympian, but to beat those people who have done so much and that you can actually share those types of tips for these people who are the best of the best of what they do. But how do those people get better? Well, and, and I have fun because for me, the journey was a blast. and It, it was fun. It was funny. And I try to share some of those experiences. Uh, what I've learned is that the, the real backbone of my presentation is something that relates well to business. In gymnastics, we have a judging category called risk, originality, and virtuosity. It's what gets you to the perfect 10 in my sport, from good to great. Mm -hmm. And so we get a few extra tenths of a point by doing something that's considered risky, by being innovative, by performing something to the ultimate. And so I break those three things down very viv vividly in, in my presentation. So, you know, in my sport, you're required to push the envelope, take some risks. The only problem is when you do that, every once in a while, you're probably going to make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's okay, so long as you learn from our mistakes. And I talk about some really big blunders that helped me to become an Olympic champion. Uh, originality is the innovation, the creativity part. So uh, for, for us, that means, you know, stop watching the other guy. Stop playing catch up. Mm -hmm. Do things on our own that we know are going to make a difference. And I talk about how we invented and created things in our sport. And then finally, virtuosity means that you might do things that everybody else does, but you do it better. That's really perfecting your skills. And the key to perfecting something is the unglamorous stuff of life, doing things over and over and over again. And how do you make that fun? And I talk about that. In fact, to be honest, I, as you know, I, um, 
uh, I actually have a visual aid that I think is a little bit more uh, entertaining than, than PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's uh, uh, my pommel horse. So I use my pommel horse uh, to perform, and, and uh, the audience has a lot of fun with that. Yeah. I can even do pommel horse when the phone's ringing, too. It's amazing. <laughs> I can multitask. So. See, this way the people know this is real. You know, reality TV is great. We've got reality interviews. Uh, and uh, a lot of people don't know this. Peter is, it, Peter's also has, you know, kids at home and everything else. That's one of the great things, too, is that people forget Olympians are actual humans <laughs> that, uh, that have families and phones and dogs and everything else. And, and that's one of the realities that, that comes through that's nice. You're, you're very genuine, too, so that helps out. Thanks. Now, uh, what are the takeaways, the tools and the takeaways that audiences have after hearing you speak? Well, I want them to understand these ROV principles. I want them to understand that, that uh, yeah, they got to push the envelope sometimes. you got to go beyond what you thought was your best. But if you do that, you might stumble along the way, and that's okay, so long as you learn from those stumbles and those mistakes. Uh, I want them to understand that it's not enough just to see what the competition's doing and then try to, to beat that or to best that. You want to be ahead of the competition. Try to figure out things that maybe they haven't done before. And, uh, and, and that's what we did as athletes in the Olympic Games. And then uh, in virtuosity, you, you got to perfect what you do because sometimes you're providing a similar product or a similar service uh, that the competitor's providing, but the way you present it, the way you give that service to that client might be what makes the difference as well. And in all of these cases, what tips you over the top is that little extra, the extra effort, the extra quality, and, and we need to understand that because it's those extras that make the difference in the world of the Olympic Games. Uh, and then one last thing. You know, Premier, we're very big at making the event planner look good and making their life easier. How do you do those things? Well, I guess for me, I try to, uh, I try to be as, as, as easy as possible to work with. I, uh, as far as I'm concerned, when I arrive on site, the client owns me. Whatever I can do for them. If, if they say, hey, we'd like you to be at a reception tonight since you're here early, absolutely. Could you stay for lunch after? The Absolutely. If I don't have another engagement that I've got to get to, uh, I don't. I don't just speak and fly out. I stay longer, so I have a chance to get to know some of the people that I spoke to. Uh, I try to provide some take-home value. I've got a series of articles that I wrote. Some of them for Personal Excellence Magazine that I send back to the client uh, for free, just so they can use those articles. Maybe to send to the audience members. Maybe in increments after I've spoken to them. Maybe a week later or two weeks later, they get an article here or there to remind them of the things that I spoke about. Uh, I, I just try to make it easy to work with. I, I, if I have my palm horse, I arrange for the palm horse. I get it shipped to the hotel. I take care of everything. And hopefully all they have to worry about is, uh, is, is the presentation, and, and hopefully they won't have to worry about that either. Great. Well, I can definitely second that, too, that you, know, you definitely do go the extra effort with the, uh, with the clients as well and being on site and uh, being friendly, not just great on stage, but uh, before and after and backstage and everything else. So, well, well, Peter, thanks again for doing this interview and sharing, uh, sharing your heart here and uh, look forward to helping you with uh, many clients in the future. Well, thank you, Brian. You're the best and so is Premier. Thanks.